So today, Nisha, we're talking about Prince, and how familiar with the purple one are you? I know the odd song. That's alright then. Yeah. Let's learn some more about him then. <laughs> Prince was the kind of guy who'd get away with pretty much anything by virtue of just being himself. A noted perfectionist, the purple one was famous for never accepting any excuses from his staff in regards to his performances. Something he made sure his entourage learned in a rather ingenious way. Don't a lot of artists consider themselves perfectionists anyway? Yes, and so we should clarify that Prince was, uh, you know, a true perfectionist and not um, a perfectionist in the way like a lot of modern artists would like have you believe. Because I think the word perfectionist is just code for nitpicky, diva-ish dickhead. Yeah. I think like Mariah Carey is one of the most famous examples of that, where there's no doubt, rather than speaking like a like fact bar about some of the crazy things that she's insisted upon that she needs for her performance. And she points out like, Prince, while he was a very demanding and exacting individual, he demanded the same level of like, you know, professionalism and perfection from himself. So if he told his like, you know, his dance crew and like, you know, his backup band, like you have to practice for this many hours, he will practice with them. So while admittedly he was a very demanding person to work for, he led by example yeah. and would absolutely hold himself to the same standards as he did everybody else. And Nisha, before we moved on, if I recall correctly, you used to work in a place where you had to deal with celebrities on occasion, correct? Yeah, I was the front of house, so I personally didn't have to deal with them, but I knew... Okay, well you're dating someone who did that, correct? Yeah, he like okay. worked behind like back of house and had to deal with the acts. So before we move on, Nisha, do you have any like, you know, personal anecdotes about just, like very nitpicky demanding like celebrities? There was a time Floyd Mayweather came, and I think he was two hours late anyway, that and then right. he demanded, I think it was Nando's before he went on stage. <laughs> okay. So he was late, and then before he went on stage he was like, no, I want some chicken. <laughs> And didn't he get it as well? Yeah. Yeah, because obviously it's Floyd well, fucking Mayweather. I think they rang up and said we need like, I don't know, 30 chickens. No, I remember, I no, I remember this story because Adam told me about it and it was, I think it was 500 chicken wings. So you wanted it, 200 yeah. chickens worth of wings and like you wanted them delivered by Nando's. If people don't know, don't do delivery. Yeah. And isn't it like they called up and went, can we get 500 chicken wings? No, it's a Floyd Mayweather. We'll be there in 10 minutes because the guy wanted to meet Floyd Mayweather. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So I'm assuming there was a lot of people who would go above and beyond to help Prince. Yeah, because like I said, he held himself to the same standard and would not make anyone do something he himself would not do. Like, for example, like his backing band, as much as they would gripe and complain about like, you know, Prince ringing them up at 3 a.m. to do like six hours of rehearsals for a show the next day, which is something he would do, um, they would turn up and do the rehearsal because Prince himself would also turn up and stay there for the same amount of time. And that to me is just good leadership. And I think just speaking from experience on a less grand scale, admittedly, uh, of like working in retail and the service industry, you are more likely to go out of your way to do something for a boss who holds themselves to the same standards that they're insisting you stick to. Yeah. And do you have any like, examples of that from like, your time? Like, you know, the dark times. Yeah, back in the dark days. The pre fact fiend days. I had a manager, I think a lot of the time she would spend away in her office during busy periods. I know the exact kind of manager. Serve on the till, having to tidy the shop as well. And it, it frustrated me because she was quite, she could be quite scary. So Sap in the office, queen bee. If she asked me to do like an extra shift, um, I wouldn't dare say no because if I said no, she would look at me and treat me as if I just insulted her mother or something. Like, Even though you know she wouldn't go out. And the thing is though, that's leading via fear. Yeah. And to quote D-Mob from Def Jam Fight for New York, <laughs> You don't rule through fear. Real power comes from respect. And I had something similar at a job I used to work where I had three managers. Because that's how you know it was poorly run. There were three fucking managers. And there was two managers that people liked and one manager that people didn't like. Yeah. And it, got, it was so bad that if the manager people didn't like would call up and ask you to do a shift, you would just say no. And I distinctly recall many an occasion of that manager calling me up. Hi, Carl. Can you work tomorrow for like a five-hour shift? It's like, sorry, no, I'm busy. Yeah. Three minutes later, I get a phone call from the other manager saying, oh, hi, Carl, love. Um, do you mind coming in tomorrow? It's like, yeah, sure, for you, James, anything. <laughs> and I'd make sure I'd say that loud enough that they sat next to each other on their, like, in their office yeah. that she'd hear me say, it. for you, James, anything. I and mean, you want to do, you obviously, a, a boss who's nice to you, and like when we, at the end of a shift, when we sat there, it's like, oh, fuck, we've got to like, clean down. He'd rock up after doing all his paperwork and help us, like, it's like, uh, like polishing cutlery, putting glasses away, relaying the restaurant. She would just sit there on fucking Facebook, like Queen Bee, mm -hmm. just sitting there going, 
Yeah. So it'd be a lot quicker if you helped. I think the worst point for me was when um, this was. I'd been working there like three years. Mm. My life was around that shop. <laughs> I, I'm so tired and so emotionally drained. Still recovering, I think. Yeah. From my time working. People might there. be able to hear that every. When we bring it up, you just like you're, you noticeably just become less energetic. Like, <sighs> but um, there was a point where me and Adam had booked a holiday. And it was for the end of March and at the start of January, I said to my manager, I've got a holiday booked for the end of March for a week. Oh, don't tell. And I know where this is going on, I did. went on like a paddy and was like, why didn't you tell me? And I'm like, I am. Three, Three months, months in advance. advance. And she won't talk, talk to me for the rest of the shift. Yeah. <laughs> just stuff like that. I don't dare do I anything. fucking hate managers who just get in their head that oh my workers are ants yeah the fact that they have a life outside of work or care about things other than the bottom line offends me on a moral level but then again like the managers who were about like the bottom line doing the best for the business but respected me as a worker like yeah i will stay an extra half an hour for you yeah and prince was that kind of boss way exacting demands but because he like you know he's willing to get down there in the dirt and do the work with you you didn't mind. But on those odd occasions where someone did decide to say no to the purple one, Prince had like, you know, a, a fairly effective way of ensuring that that never happened again. Well, of course, there's going to be an example of a time that happened. There is, yes. And for this, we refer to one Patrick Whalen, who worked with Prince in a professional capacity and was called up late one night by Prince, who asked him for a lighting setup that Whalen genuinely thought would be impossible to achieve. And when Prince made the request, Waylon said, no. Just straight up, no, like, no, it yeah. cannot be done. And he recalls that Prince um, thought for a moment, like paused, and Prince said to him, so what you're telling me, Patrick, is that in the one second it took you to say no, you left your body and exhausted every possibility. To which Waylon thought to himself, I, I guess he has a point. <laughs> um, leave it with me, Prince, I'll... I'll get back to you when I can. And he went and he sat down and he figured out a way to achieve the effect that Prince wanted. But yeah. this wasn't the end of Prince's lesson because according to Waylon, for the next few weeks, every single time Waylon asked him to do something, made a request, Prince would just say no. Like, it doesn't matter how trivial, inconsequential the thing Waylon asked him, he'd say no. Like, Waylon would let you know, like, yeah, this really helped me because saying no is not helpful or conducive to the creative process. Because, like, you know, shows like that were a collaborative effort and if you've got one person on the team who just says no flatly without as prince said exploring every possibility you're not going to put the best show on you can well i just think that's like what a way of doing it yeah because like any other prima donna celebrity you've heard about would probably just fire that guy yeah he's like how dare like, you say no how to dare me? you say no to me make it work and slam the phone down yeah prince like used it as an opportunity to teach Waylon a lesson and like I said, changed his entire outlook on life and made him into just a better person because of it. Yeah. That's fucking awesome, because that's fucking Prince. So, Nisha, I think it's safe to say now that neither of us will ever go back to doing a proper sit-down nine-to-five job, correct? Oh, I hope not. Yeah, like, even if Fact Fiend, like, you know, implodes and dies tomorrow which I hope it doesn't do, like, 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 comment, subscribe, that sort of shit. But we've now got enough experience in like, you know, this industry to like, you know, work behind the scenes, to like do all the things. Yeah. So in that vein, because you're never going to go back and get that proper job, would you like now to shit talk your old job? Because <laughs> I feel there's a oh. lot of like, just frustration built beside you over how much you hated that job. I feel like even like three years later, it still has an impact on me. I still have dreams. No, actually nightmares about waking that, up and still get to work. I still work there, I get roped back into working. I've had that moment where I wake up and go, oh shit, I need to go to work today. So I've not worked in five years. There was a moment which I was so done. I think this, was, <laughs> this was near Okay, so okay, what, what was the moment where you just went, fuck this, I'm done? Because that's like, it's a very personal moment. But uh, yeah, it was a small store, so we didn't have many staff, but it was always really busy. And we always had to have someone who was on the shop floor to keep an eye on the door in case anyone tried to leg it with yeah. some stock. So there was one person on shoes, one person on the shop floor, me on the tills and the manager just hiding in the office. And yeah. it was so busy. Like I had a queue that was like almost in the middle of the store. And I was like radioing, can someone please help me on the till? This person on the shop floor came to help me. Um, because the person on the shoes couldn't leave because shoes was always hectic. Yeah. So no you always need someone like, have you got this in the nine? Yeah. Oh my and you just look and go, no. <laughs> 
But yeah, so I had a person help me on the till to get this queue down and the manager came out of the office like, why is there no one on shop floor? Why is there no one watching the front door? And I was like, I need help on the till. He's like, there's always got to be someone on the shop floor. I'm like, you know what, fuck it, I'll just do it on my own then. And like the person who was on the till with me had to go on the shop floor. She went back in the office and I was like, fuck it then. And then like my assistant manager who was on shoes came over, saw the massive queue that I still yep. had and was like, look, we need someone on the tills. So, yeah, my manager had to come out of the office, go on shop floor, and then I had a till person help me. But I bet I they complained the entire like, fucking time. Right, so policy is you're not meant to have long queues, or you're meant to keep queues down. I want all my um, groceries in one bag, but I don't <laughs> yeah. want it to be heavy. So, like, oh, you know, you think, oh, if I've got a big queue, I need help. But obviously, we're not allowed to take someone off shop floor. So and there's like, only three is, members of staff on. What is the correct answer? So I was like, you know what? Fuck it. <laughs> I can't be arsed anymore. Everyone goes to that moment of just, fuck this. I remember it was when I was... I got a job so I could get a discount on a hotel. I work for a restaurant for a bit. It was owned by the Hilton. So I wanted to get a discount at the Hilton because we were going to a wedding. And I'm like, I need that discount. It was a 90% discount. And I ended up getting like a £150 hotel room for about 15 quid. But because I went, stayed in it with other people, I ended up paying like nothing and then got a free trip down there because I got a cheap hotel room. Yeah. So I worked there not telling them, yeah, I plan on quitting in three months. But the Hilton, American company, American work ethic. Yeah. So what would happen was it'd be, okay then, uh, we've got a new system in place, new electronic signing system. And if you are one minute late, one minute, you will be docked 15 minutes pay. Okay. That's um, extreme. Here, here's a fun fact about the law. If you ain't getting fucking paid, you don't fucking work. I did this job to get that discount and uh, you know just like which my mate got me it and I didn't tell him I was going to quit I felt really bad <laughs> so, I don't give a fuck I'll argue about this all day what are they going to do if they fire me oh no I'll go back and just go sit at home and just write more article bollocks to it but like, I just came in so like, Carl you're a minute late and what well you've been docked 15 minutes oh excellent awesome so I just like put put the glasses down that I was cleaning I went and just sat down in the restaurant it wasn't open I sat down took my phone out the, what are you doing I, uh, I'm, I'm taking my break now no, get back on, get back. You saw the right thing. We open in half an hour. Yeah. Am I being paid? No, you've been docked 15 minutes. Now I'm not working. And like my boss, they, they couldn't understand. Yeah. Why aren't you working? I'm, th I'm telling you to work, but you're not paying me. And it just got to the point where I said, look, I'm happy to take this further. Would you like to go speak to your boss and tell them why you're trying to make me work when I'm not being paid? Yeah. Because I would love to have that conversation and hear you say it. And they just go, no. <laughs> so... And then a previous job I had, I, I was really bad. Because I didn't really need to have the job. I just liked having the extra bit of money and the social aspect of, yeah, it's like making new friends. You got like, people to go on nights out with and stuff like that. So it'd be, okay, you need to turn up 15 minutes before your shift for a briefing, yeah. for an event. So am I being paid? Well, no, but you need to, oh, I'm not turning up then. No, but you need to be here 15 minutes early. Why? Because, so you can be brief. So that's work, yes? Well, yeah, it is for work, but it's not part of your shift. <laughs> no, that's not how it works. <laughs> no. And I remember I came in five minutes early once and I put my headphones in and refused to listen to it. It was that same boss, that one I hated. Yeah. It was a nice boss, I'd do it. And I remember having this argument very loudly on the bar as the big manageress walked past, like the person who was in charge of our department. Mm -hmm. And I just remember, I went, Deborah, let me just ask you something. If I'm not being paid, I don't have to work. Don't well, yeah, Carl, it's fairly standard. Yeah. Do you mind telling, like, you know, her that? And just turn my boss, like, running, like, yeah! I don't give a fuck! 